I promised I would go into this with an open mind. But having seen Echo in the first two episodes, Marvel is in deep, deep doodle. That's right, I'm going to talk. I'm going to rant about Echo. Echo, you say? What is that? I didn't hear you. That's right, Echo is the newest Disney Plus release dropped on December 9th with all five episodes. From my understanding, the show has was supposed to be an originally like a 12 or 10 episode run, cut down to six episodes and cut from six to five episodes. And now that I've watched the first two episodes, I completely understand what they're doing because it's basically previously on Hawkeye. So I am the man you may know as Z, and I am from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and we have an amazing podcast that you should check out. But this is me talking about Echo and Marvel in my typical Marvel rant. If you're unfamiliar with the show, I have watched every single episode of every single Marvel thing ever released, and I torture myself so that you don't need to torture yourself this one's a definite pass. Probably one of the worst things I think I've seen on TV in a long time. It's incompetently directed. It's also incompetently written. And I just... The reviews are all over the place. And one thing I want to make sure that people understand is I don't necessarily blame the actors um, for what's going on. I squarely blame all of this on Marvel. So let's take a look. And if you weren't, uh, the weird part about Echo is that this is Marvel Spotlight. And this is a new concept for Marvel. What they're trying to do is take everything, take certain things out of the Marvel normal continuity and put them into this new continuity, which may or may not include uh, Daredevil and Punisher and all those things from Netflix. And this is not part of the Marvel continuity universe. This is its own continuity. I don't think a lot of people understand that. So when they see Spotlight, they're like, what is going on here? It's going to be edgier, harder hitting. There was no reason for this to be rated TVMA unless they're afraid of the gunplay. Because they showed a bunch of graphic wounds and things like that that were completely unnecessary like i don't how many times do i need to see the hero stitch themselves up with their own wounds because they know how to do that i just i don't understand i don't need to see any of that so what's also confusing is in order to understand this you had to watch other things and i thought they were trying to get away from that and this is just it's disastrous it makes no sense If you did not watch Hawkeye, you will not understand what happened in any of this. So let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. And uh, Echo, what to know about Marvel's first TVMA series and indigenous Death Star. Yes, she checks every box you could possibly think of. Strong, female, women, indigenous, deaf, handicapped, never acted in anything else before. Uh, it's crazy. And the amount of reshoots that happens in this thing is pretty obvious because unfortunately the actress's weight fluctuates from scene to scene. It's all of it is a disaster. This is just, it's almost incomprehensible. In the first two episodes, there's barely a plot. And in fact, if you really look at it, the first two episodes, at least a quarter of it is previously on Hawkeye, so things that were already filmed. Not to mention, they'll put these like five or so minute cutaways on things like uh, the first Chakta tribe, how their origin story happens, which I don't necessarily care about. They'll be like talking about... Like, I don't understand. It's too much fetishism, fetishizing of indigenous people. We need to stop fetishizing. Like, what are current 
indigenous Native American tribes up to. It's as if they contribute nothing to society except for what they did in the past, which I think is completely ridiculous, unfortunate, d demeaning to them. Their culture is alive and well, and they have plenty to offer us. We don't need to go back to the past. I mean, you can reflect on it, but it, it's ridiculous. They have like an ancient lacrosse game or something going on. So if you remove these two five-minute segments, and then you have about two minutes of credits in the beginning and two minutes of credits at the end, you're really dealing with 20-minute shows. So, and not a lot happens in them. Um... What do you need to know from the comic book series? The only thing that's interesting about this is Maya Lopez was an indigenous heroine from the Blackfeet tribe, which the creators of the MC Sim MCU thought were, uh, like the people who brought you Echo thought that the Blackfeet tribe weren't Indian enough for them. So they changed it to a different tribe. I find that to be ridiculous. She's the adopted daughter of Wilson Fisk, which they don't do enough about. And then she's a savant who can mimic almost any physical action after seeing it once. Okay, that's fine. And she's deaf. Also fine. I don't care. They thought her powers were lame. So now they give her ambiguous female strength powers that no one really... Like, there's no definition of what they are why people like the original characters is they have definitively it's extremely defined what their powers are we know what they are thor the god of thunder can fly and use lightning okay that's cool spider-man does whatever a spider can you remember they have songs for these people superman faster than a speeding bullet what does what does Echo do? Do I even know if Echo is a villain? I do not. Uh, in fact, I think she is a villain. At no point has she done anything heroic. She murders many people. Am I wait like this is the other problem with Marvel is now they're turning these um, these female character any of these characters they're they're fetishizing villains. Where they're trying to show you like these villains are really good people. They're not. She murders a bunch of people. A lot of people. And whether or not they're criminals or not, isn't the whole point of Daredevil's code is he's not supposed to... He struggles with murdering people because he won't be forgiven for his sins because he's a Catholic. And this chick's supposed to be hero? We're supposed to root for her because she wants to be the queen instead of Kingpin's empire? I'm not even going to get into the plot holes. There's already a billion plot holes in this show that make no sense. But basically, the plot is... For some reason... Um, Echo decides that after she gets her clock cleaned by Hawkeye, she attempts to kill the Kingpin. And as far as she knows, he is dead. And she wants to topple his empire. But she decides to go to Oklahoma to do it because of some shipping thing. Unclear. Not explained very clearly. She's going to take over Kingpin's empire. Not from New York City. No. She's going to do it from Oklahoma because she's on the run from his men it's unclear none of it is made like it doesn't make any sense there's also no close-ups allowed because the only close-ups you're allowed to have are from her being able to speak in sign language and did you know everyone in the world speaks sign language i didn't know that i thought that only specialized people could do that in fact kingpin hires someone to do it but when she goes back to oklahoma every single person can speak to her in sign language which is a common misconception so I think these are just, this is just put together by fools, this, this entire thing. So why you would put her in here, I, have, I, have, I don't even know why they made a show. That Yes, they changed her tribe from the Blackfeet to the Choctaw and a mix of, of native imagery because they're trying to provide consistency and authenticity. Really? Really? That's not authenticity. No, it, there, none of it makes any sense. She's also an amputee, which makes her better, I guess, because whatever. What is it about? It's about nothing. I don't know. She goes home to reconcile with nobody. Her grandmother sends her father away and breaks her up from her cousin for no reason. She doesn't like her dad. So she's like, well, since I don't like you... I'm not going to help raise my granddaughter anymore. I'm not going to see her for the next 20 years. That sounds like a good grandma, right? That's what every grandma would do. 
I don't want to see you anymore because, you know, I don't like your dad. So forget it. We're not going to have a relationship. Sounds like a great human being. I just, they're so wrapped up in representation that they don't understand the story they're telling is degrading and negligent, in my opinion. Like, it's just, it's stupid. So let's keep looking. There are reviews. This is from Discussing Film. Echo reviewed. It's, it's thrilling but flawed. First of all, they don't ever explain, A, if she has any powers. She randomly decides to have some kind of powers, which are ambiguous. They don't give you any indication that she's had training. The fact that she could even stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daredevil in her very first heist ever for more than 30 seconds is ridiculous and just f foolishness foolishness to th like that fight scene was so bad i can't even it's a waste of everyone's time all the fight scenes are ridiculous it just it's they're, they're ridiculous i remember a time when natasha romanoff used to use things the way that she fought was very indicative of someone who had to like hurl their entire body weight at a full-grown man in order to move him to do something. She's just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. In the meantime, I just watched the heavyweight champion of the world in female boxing get knocked out by some random sparring partner of hers that was a dude. Some rando guy knocked her out. So, I'm supposed to believe any of this? Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous so like i said the plot is um yeah I, the familial drama i don't even know who is who or who is related to who because they don't do a good job of explaining it and half of the show is all callbacks to <clears throat> watching hawkeye so in two episodes it's it's ridiculous like everybody loves you here but I don't know. She's only, they only introduced us to like three characters. Well, four. And half of them are dead. So, and here is Variety. And they say Echo fails to live up to the potential of its Marvel superhero review or re show. And people want to talk about superhero fatigue, which I think is ridiculous. Are people fatigued of superheroes? No. They are fatigued of these the exploitation of superhero fans by people who don't care about any of these stories. If you cared, okay, let's say you you like Spider Man, you want to do a Spider Man show, like show whatever it is, doesn't matter, pick whatever. Are you going to change Peter Parker from being Peter Parker to Panda Parker or Joseph Parker because you don't really like his name? And you know what? His background, he has, you know, Aunt May and, and, and Uncle Ben. But you know what? I, I prefer that he doesn't have that because I'd like a different, you know. Let's say he was raised by a single, just the grandfather. It's just, there is no Aunt May. Forget her because, you know, I, I'm not that interested. And you know what? Spider-Man, I don't like those powers are kind of lame. So let's make him Beetle Man, right? Because that's essentially what they did with Echo. She was created in 1999. They changed their tribe. They changed their powers because they didn't like them. Because they have no respect for the source material. So when you have no respect for the source material, you have no respect for your own story. You don't even know what you're doing. You have no clue. And there's cast interviews to show all this. It's it's ridiculous. Vincent D'Onofrio, who I absolutely love uh, as Wilson Fisk, is it's just ridiculous, all of it. Um... They try to explain. I don't know what they were thinking about. They they include Choctaws are spotlighted in various periods of the 13th and 18th century in the present day. Again, why would you change to her heritage? Because you didn't think it was authentic enough. Really? That's that's what you did. So again, it's just it's so far it's terrible. There's nothing. There's literally nothing good about it. I, like I said, I like some of the actors. Um, in fact, none of the actors so far have I been like, they're terrible, like they're useless. I, I don't really understand what I'm supposed to think about Echo. As far as I can tell, she's a villain. I don't really want to root for her. I am actually hoping Wilson... If I have to root against between two villains, 
Wilson Fisk and Echo. I'm gonna root for Echo, or I'm gonna root for Wilson Fisk, not Echo, because Vincent D'Onofrio is a better actor. Just gonna flat out say it. So, let me know what you guys think. If you, did you get a chance to see this? How are you taking this? Are you just done with Disney Plus? I would suspect many of you are. You don't have to watch it because I'm telling you not to. It's it's gonna be a waste of your time, and you're going to be aggravated. And unless you really just feel like flipping through your phone, it's a complete waste of your time. So anyway, that's where I stand with it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, check out our podcast. I'm going to link it right here, and you could check it out. It's a lot of fun. I do it with my partner, Noob Noob, and he has a lot of really dumb things to say, which you will find enjoyable. You can catch that same podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, great places like that, and uh, we live stream it 7.30 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. You can also join us, help support the channel, help us grow. Um, we're very small. We just do what we do, and we don't listen to anybody else's opinions. We say the stupid things that we say, and hopefully it entertains you. But as for myself, I am on to the next one. <laughs>